So I have a very important question for you before we start. Is Jesus the Emily Post of his day? Does everybody know who Emily Post is? Okay. Um, well, our gospel reading today could be an etiquette lesson. Uh, Emily Post's number one rule about planning a wedding is you should not omit inviting friends just because they are poor. This sounds a little bit like Jesus' advice to the host in our reading. Of course, Emily Post goes on to outline matching bridesmaids' dresses and groomsmen's boutonnieres and who should pay for what. And Jesus goes in a slightly different direction. He begins by giving the guests at this banquet what that he is attending at the Pharisee's house some great advice about etiquette for attending a wedding banquet. Don't sit too close to the host. Don't take a seat of honor because there might be another guest who has more status than you. You will be mortified if the host has to ask you to move to the foot of the table to make room for someone more important. Here's a helpful tip. Sit lower than your status so that you will be asked to move closer to the host. Well, as a practical matter, Jesus' advice is sound and it reflects conventional wisdom. Let's say the next time they're at a wedding banquet, with the guests take his advice and they all sit at the foot of the table and the host comes in and says, oh my gosh, everybody move up a little bit, move up, move up. Well, their esteem is raised, the host is seen as generous, it goes smoothly and peacefully and everyone's happy, it would be a great banquet. And what if the host decided to follow Jesus' other advice? about inviting the poor, or the crippled, the lame, and the blind to a banquet. Feeding the hungry and the disenfranchised. What an amazing act of charity that would be. As practical advice, Jesus' message is pretty dang good. And if followed, it would make a difference in the lives of this community. So, I don't want to say that Jesus isn't giving practical advice here, because it's good practical advice. And sometimes hearing Jesus' practical advice is the best we can do. But let's be honest. Jesus is rarely talking about the practical application of social justice and moral or etiquette for their own sake. There is usually many different levels of learning and teaching that are going on there. Some of them, cosmic level, kingdom of God level, when Jesus is speaking. Now, if we think metaphorically of the host as God, and all of humanity are the guests at God's table, jostling to get closer to God, it changes Jesus' advice. What Jesus is saying becomes, don't presume to seat yourself too close to God. Do not live in the arrogance of thinking that you are in any way closer to God than the blind beggar in the street. Now it's not that God's table is a reversal of the world's table, where the lowly are sat higher at the table and the arrogant and the rich are seated far from the host. It's more that in the kingdom of God, every place at the table is a place of honor. And this is why Jesus tells the host that he should invite the lowly. Not to increase their status, not even to feed them, but to recognize that there is no status. Now for those who have presumed to seat themselves close to the host, close to God, and believed themselves to be the beloved children of God while excluding others, this no status thing is a rude awakening. If the church leaders at this banquet that Jesus is at are listening with their metaphor ears, 
They understand the higher message that Jesus is teaching, and they are not happy. Because they have presumed to place themselves close to God while holding others as less than and not worthy. They have been deciding who should sit at the foot of the table and who should have the places of honor. Well, people assigning seating at God's table has been an issue throughout history. People presuming themselves capable of taking on the role of host at God's table instead of letting God do it has been an issue throughout history. People who have obviously missed this lesson in Luke about who should be invited to the banquet in the kingdom of God. Because if we are in God's kingdom, here and now, if the kingdom of God isn't something that comes later, but something that we are living now, then everyone is invited to sit at the banquet in a place of honor now. Let me say that again. Every human being is invited to the banquet of God to sit in a place of honor now. Because at God's table, there is no status. Every human being is a beloved child of God. A special child of God. A favored child of God. Every human being. Now, conventional wisdom, worldly wisdom, tells us that if everyone is special, then no one is special. If everyone gets a trophy for participating, then participating doesn't mean anything. Unless you strive, compete, excel, and win, you haven't earned your reward. Our status is determined by what we do. And there are a limited number of places of honor to go around, so we must strive to get one of them. This is how life is lived in the worldly place of scarcity. And in God's kingdom, our status is determined by what God does. And God chooses the way of abundance. The places of honor at God's table are infinite. And everybody gets one. Now, you feel like I'm pounding this a little bit today, and I've preached on it in a few sermons. Um, I keep coming at it over and over and over, and I am, because I am concerned. Because this is not just a historical issue. We are still doing it. There are still people who have placed themselves as host at God's table, deciding not only where people get to sit and who is considered worthy to sit in places of honor, but who gets to be invited to the banquet, if at all. We here at St. Mark's are a pretty welcoming group. I'd say the Episcopal Church as a whole is pretty welcoming. I mean, we're not actively trying to exclude people from God's kingdom. So maybe we don't see this as our issue. But exclusion is happening in the world under the guise of Christianity. Exclusion is happening using Jesus to exclude people from the kingdom of God. Using Jesus to exclude people from God's table. And I am appalled at the presumption and arrogance of people who would exclude any human being from their honored place at God's table. I'm also slightly appalled that I must acknowledge that those who presume to exclude others, these arrogant ones, are also beloved children of God. (laughs) Who? (laughs) Who have a place of honor at the table. Because I don't get to decide who is welcome and where they get to sit. God's isn't, God's abundance isn't mine to control. Now, being appalled gets the blood flowing and the energy going, but 
is not extremely productive. So, what can we do? What are we called to do? Well, we can live our baptismal vows, knowing that every person we meet, as we go about our day, has a dignity that we must respect, that we are called to respect. We can look upon each human being that we see in passing, each human being that we see on the news, each human being that we see on the street as a beloved child of God. Every single human being. We can say something. Speak out. We can show compassion and understanding for those human beings who are being excluded. God's beloved children who are being excluded. Not only from religions and churches, but out in the world where our mission is. In the end, I believe we must live as an example of the abundance of the kingdom of God and the infinite seating at God's table. Amen. <clears throat>